So welcome to the talk, uh, start your engines, white box monitoring for your load tests. Um, so the talk you had before was about uh, how to monitor production and um, maybe your tools already have metrics that you can expose, uh, but now we want to look at how you actually get to your metrics in your product, maybe to get your developers to instrument your, uh, the application. So this is the agenda for the next uh, like 20 minutes, uh, why to use uh, load testing in the first place, how to set up an environment with Prometheus for your load tests, uh, a short demo that well, might probably fall short due to just a restart of the machine, uh, and then uh, what to expect, or what worked uh, good for us, uh, what could have been improved, and uh, things to watch out for if you try something like this uh, at work. So um, why to use load tests? Well, in the naive world, we have a developer that develops an application on his or her machine, and uh, what well, is then being tested by another human on, on his or her machine. And uh, once you're in production, you have lots of users. And what then usually happens, um, something bad, uh, your server catches fire because all the load uh, of the users. And you find out, well, what could have we done different? Uh, maybe we could have used some metrics in here. But uh, obviously, in the first place, you didn't put in any metrics, and you're lost in production. Right. So uh, let's do it better. So. Um, Let's again have a developer at his or her machine develop the software they want to deploy and do the testing with some load testing tools uh, with Gatling and JMeter and then uh, make your server burn up in flames. Uh, and well, at that point, make the developers add some metrics to your software. Um, just the metrics they need to find out why it's burning down and as if they have added enough metrics to get the insights they need, uh, to pass the load tests, only then go into production. Uh, and, well, as you have already put in all the white box metrics into your application, you can use the same metrics in production. Uh, that's the basic idea. Um, in test environments, you might have a short retention time and might also scrape every second. Uh, in production, you might have like 15 days, we heard, and uh, scrape every 30 seconds, every 60 seconds. Uh, what fits you best? And we tried that approach, and let's see what comes out of that one. So um, then how to set up, set up uh, an environment for this? Uh, the technical building blocks um, that we've seen here, well, there's the application and the test. Well, we are testing Java applications. So we put in the, the Java simple client in our applications. And well, the load testing tool, either Gatling or JMeter. Both of these building blocks they are delivered by the product team, consisting of developers, consisting of testers, uh, and business members. And they make up their mind how they want to test this application. And, but well, they need to have some bits and pieces of infrastructure in their test environment. So what we set up for them is a Prometheus server, a C advisor. So we get some metrics about the containers they are running, um, at least RAM usage, uh, CPU usage, uh, the things they were most interested in. And uh, well, we also spun up a graphite exporter. Um, so this up, and then it's up to them to link their load testing to the graphite exporter, and also up to them to make their app discoverable. Um, you might have, in our test environment, we had a simple file-based discovery mechanism. So the developers enter their applications. Uh, they want to have uh, monitored in the testing environment into this file. Um, that's then push, pushed to the service uh, using automatic configuration management. So, uh, and yeah, they're done. And also we provided a central Grafana instance, and each team could then create dashboards they needed, basically matching every load test we're running with one at least one dashboard uh, showing uh, how, the, how this actually works. Uh, and well, looking at the colors again, um, the infrastructure blocks are then here in the light, uh, light purple, reddish uh, thing. Um, they set them up uh, in the very beginning. Um, and after, after a while, more and more services were installed on this, more and more load tests were running, and we had lots of more blue boxes. Um, it was like a monitoring self-service for all our people in the testing environment. 
So there was no need for an admin uh, or to actually change the configuration of Prometheus because people were just adding things to the Prometheus file themselves um, and they were pushing metrics by themselves to the graphite exporter uh, and that worked quite well for us. And it scaled uh, with the teams that were using it. So um, short thing about Gatling versus JMeter, they're both low testing tools. Um, JMeter is more like a graphical user interface thing. Uh, you can point and click your configurations for a load test. Um, but at some point, you usually come to a point where you need some scripting. Gatling, on the other hand, is a load testing tool based uh, on, on a Scala DSL. So you do scripting all the time. Um, but then, at least to me, uh, Scala is a bit mind twisting now and then. Um, JMeter stores um, the configuration as a mixML blob. Um, I usually don't want to put that in the Git repository, but still sometimes do. Uh, but Gatling stores then the Scala code uh, like normal source code uh, into your repository, and that's fine. Um, yeah, probably Gatling is a bit more, well, it's cooler if it's because it's non-blocking non event loop based on ACA, but that might not make a difference for your load test. In the end, we, end, we settled for Gatling, um, and uh, we yeah, did some good results in our load test here. So then, you might ask, well, why, actually, why are we using uh, the graphite and graphite exporter? Well, we're not using graphite as a graphite installation, but only um, the mechanism of uh, JMeter and Gatling to export <coughs> graphite metrics stuff. So we sent both JMeter and Gatling support this export of graphite metrics, and then we send them to the graphite exporter that is just another exporter like any other else. Um, the good thing is, well, I know this pull and uh, push discussion here, it's, but it's, it's quite easy for if you run this Gatling test on a, on a local developer's machine or a tester's machine, and this then just sends the metrics to the graphite um, exporter. Uh, and the graphic exporter is, yeah, it doesn't care where the, where the information comes from. It's also, um, well, it's a simple, very simple exporter. All the metrics that we push to the graphite exporter, they're, they expire after five minutes. Um, so uh, there's nothing to clean up afterwards. After a load test, just wait five minutes and all the metrics will be gone. Um, you don't need to restart it, not, nothing to clean. Just fine. Um, and the metrics that we get, for example, from Gatling are then the number of users uh, in the load test, how many are active. We get some aggregated timings and the percentiles. And, and we all get that into from, from, uh, from Gatling to the graphite exporter to Prometheus and then in our, into our dashboards. Um, something that you might watch, want to watch out if you use the graphite exporter as it is. Uh, it will give you metric names that are looking like like lots of underscores in there, things that should probably be uh, labels, uh, label values. Um, but well, you can do without. But maybe if you want to be a good leading example to with good naming metrics, you want to put in a conversion there. Otherwise, you have lots of underscores, and people uh, will be asking you, well, why should I use labels all, uh, at all if the getting thing uh, using the, is not using them? <coughs> So um, let's see if the demo works. Oh, well, probably put it at the end. I don't know if it's. I just rebooted the machine. That's a bit of a pity. <laughs> it came up again. <laughs> Thank God. So the the dashboards that we came up with. Um, right. <laughs> Thanks for tweeting. Um, so the dashboards, they, the testers and developers, they don't, they didn't do any really fancy dashboards. It's usually we have the number of users that are in the in the load test. Uh, probably should start the load test to make it a bit more exciting. Um, you have the number of users. You have some drop wizard metrics that we um, exported there. Um, we added also, well, we are a Java shop in the end. Um, we added Hystrix, that's a circuit breaker library from Netflix in here. Um, this is then uh, capturing lots of metrics out of um, uh, lots of metrics um, of the communication between our services. So we have the timings of uh, the one service talking to another service, 
uh, in our dashboards as well. And then again, like CPU metrics from our uh, from the C advisor plus some JVM metrics about memory usage. And then we can follow up on our load tests, how that progresses, how many users are currently active, that comes from Gatling, um, how, how much CPU and RAM we are using, that comes from C advisor, and uh, how our application is doing using some metrics from either Drop Wizard and how the communication is working between the applications coming from Hystrix, all in one dashboard. And that works uh, quite nicely for us. Questions so far? Question at the end. Oh. So, um, yeah, these are the dashboards. We've seen them actually live after the restart. <laughs> Thank God it worked. But, well, what to expect? How did it actually work out uh, looking at it uh, uh, at the end of the project? Um, so, we're pulling all this information from the infrastructure, from the application. Um, people were using counters quite a bit, or also, uh, sorry, gauges, but, uh, that's a difficult word for a German, sorry. Uh, for, for queues and pools, we'll be looking at uh, database uh, connection pools, if they're filling up or not, uh, the Tomcat connector pools, um, all the things that you find in a load test that might just fail or actually fail uh, until, uh, up until the point where you tune them. Um, we collected some drop with us metrics uh, that are then forwarded to Prometheus metrics part of the Java collector and at least the timings uh, for from Hystrix. And this is, well, Hystrix is, I think, a pretty cool thing because it gives me the statistics how many calls between services were successful, how many failed, and also the timings. Um, looking at lessons learned here, um, the approach worked well for us, uh, well enough to pass uh, the load tests um, because we were able to put everything into one dashboard and find out uh, what was going on. Um, the inter-application communication was pretty good, um, covered by Hystrix, and because we did this uh, self-service functionality for monitoring in our test environments, uh, it was also a breeze uh, for the different teams to work independently. Um, on the other hand, looking at all the metrics that we now put into our application, uh, looking a bit more like into production, how, how that works out. Um, the exported metrics, they don't necessarily follow uh, the Prometheus naming conventions. Um, people just add the metrics they need to their uh, load tests. Um, if you want to use them in production, you might do some training and some, well, advanced training how good Prometheus naming uh, metrics sh should look like. Um, also, if you're using the drop wizard metrics um, and they are then like collected for uh, Prometheus metrics, they don't fill out all the help labels, uh, usually, um, with proper meaningful texts. Um, so I think next time we would use uh, Prometheus uh, metrics directly instead of drop wizard metrics. Also, the thing, like, in, when people start with load testing, they usually use, like, counters and averages. Um, they don't necessarily look too much into uh, histograms and summary and percentiles. Um, also, Probably you want to get them going in the first place, to get, get some good experience with Prometheus, uh, and uh, after then a few days or weeks, uh, tell them about uh, histograms and summaries and how they actually work. Um, in the end, you might end up ending with summaries, but you want to aggregate these metrics in a cluster, but you can't, so yeah, you should have done histograms in the first place, but that depends on your usage. Also, um, talking to developers uh, and the ones doing load tests, they probably never heard uh, about this use method or red method, um, that you have like a consistent metrics about utilization, saturation errors uh, also, or if you're looking at rates, uh, yet you have an, an, a rate of requests, a rate of requests and the duration of, uh, of the requests. Also that, um, yeah, I was, then giving some developers some awareness uh, that there's a little bit more than just uh, counters and averages. All right. Good, well, these are some links. Um, at some point, we contributed back to the Prometheus Hystrix metrics publisher. Um, the, the, some work started at SoundCloud originally, and we're now um, contributing to that. Um, that's the tools that we used. Um, yeah. 20 minutes time. <laughs> okay. Questions? Yeah. 
Frage? Yes. Um, you, you talked about the best practices uh, for naming conventions. So uh, are the product teams uh, configuring the Prometheus instance themselves, or is there a team who is taking the input and they are doing the alert configuration for them? Uh, it's, well, it, for the load tests, they just didn't, um, the team, the product teams only care that their metrics that they're adding to the application end up in Prometheus so they can show them in the Grafana dashboard. They don't care about alerts at the very moment. Um, okay, thanks. So, um, hi. Um, I have a question about the service level objectives that you might have. Do you have any like formal definition of what objectives you want to meet? And if so, is it a manual process to check if this is done or is it some automatic step during the build? Um, so there are formal requirements in terms of what kind of load we need to tackle, um, like how many requests per minute uh, or per second uh, and how they distribute over different use cases. So that's quite laid down in the requirements, and we automated that. It's it's not running. Well, we, we can push a button on our Jenkins, <laughs> so they run, but we don't run it every night, put it this way. Um, mm -hmm. Is that the answer to the question? Yes. Okay. Hello. Uh, how do you investigate the problem in application with thousands of metrics? <laughs> Some correlations or yeah, well, something else? The, the, the metrics that there are, they, they're then probably best understood by the product team because they put them in, in the, uh, there in the first place. Um, the investigation from an operational point of view is then usually done memory usage, CPU usage, but the metrics, well, we, we have to see how that works out. <laughs> I've, I don't have answers yet to that. Who is getting the alerts? Is it the product team? Um, well, not that far yet. <laughs> Sorry for telling you that, that okay. one. Um, okay. uh, just to clarify, so the Prometheus instance which you guys are consuming, it's totally up to the application team to maintain, right? It's not something which are really monitoring the infrastructure or, or doing alerting and the, the complete thing. It's just a developer environment where application team owns and use accordingly, right? Like Grafana, they can directly integrate or something like that. Right, well, that would also be my recommendation. If you have a test environment or development of different test environments, you should have a Prometheus instance just for that test environment that is independent of your production environment. Right, and right. you have no problem with that setup. Uh, yeah, because in that case, alerting is not that meaningful. Because in that case, people more interested on dashboard like Grafana, so they can monitor how the system is performing. Yeah, um, yes, that's true. They're mostly interested in Grafana to see what their load tests are doing. Right. Um, but on the other hand, it gives you some uh, instrumentation, at least the standard metrics about a driver virtual machine. Indeed. Um, so you don't get any longer black box out of test, but at least some basic JVM metrics out of test that you can then use in a more from if you were then in an other system reliability engineer point of view. Right. Use some standard metrics. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? Well then, thank you.